What's up, divehards? I'm currently in my cabin aboard the Ferox, which is one of my favorite liveaboards, and we're actually headed to one of my favorite spots on the planet. We're going to Malpella. So it's a 36 hour crossing from Buenaventura to Malpelo, so that means we have some time to kill and I'm actually totally fine with that, given that it's been a busy few days. On Monday I flew into Cali, grabbed my bags, grabbed a taxi and met up with my friend Juan Pablo, who took me around to show me what Cali is all about. Well, if you are in Cali we should go to take a class of salsa. Alright, let's do it. Let's go. Next day, we met up with the rest of the group, hopped on a bus, and transferred down to Buenaventura, which is where we'd board the MV Ferox. Morning. Welcome to Malpelo. We are moored up on the eastern side of the island. The zodiacs are going down and we start diving in one hour. See you down there. So our time here in Malpelo has almost come to an end and we've had some incredible dives. Malpelo is one of those super wild remote places and one of the main reasons we come here is for pelagic action. 
anything from the ocean can appear here at any moment. Or not. You know, one of the things I've really come to appreciate is the resident marine life that Malpelo is home to. The fish populations are incredibly rich, not just in terms of their diversity, but also just the sheer biomass. Like the school of jacks that hangs out near Dartanyang literally black out the sun. And the poop from the school of mullet snappers that hang out near Aquario can turn crystal visibility into murky water for the entire dive site. It's wild. I'm also starting to think that I'm encountering the same individuals year after year, whether it's the family of eels that all live in the same crack at Freteria, or the large leather bass that hang out near La Navera. It's been really nice getting to know the, the animals of Malpelo over the years. And I think that the incredibly healthy local marine ecosystem here in Malpelo is at least in part due to the presence of liveaboards and very importantly, the silky, which is here 365 days a year patrolling the island for illegal fishing. Unfortunately though, I don't think this is true to the same extent for pelagic species like sharks and tunas, which are aggressively fished all around the world and even just outside the perimeter of the marine park here in Malpelo. So I'm really hoping for some pelagic magic in our last few dives. Let's see what we can find. So we definitely had some of that magic on our last few dives. We had three individual whale sharks show up and check us out, an oceanic manta ray, tons of hunting activity, just a really awesome last day of diving. And I think you can see 
why I love Malpelo so much. I also really love diving it on the Ferox. You know, accommodations are basic, but it's very clean and comfortable. The crew is extremely warm. The food is incredible. And every diver gets their own cabin, which is unusual and really nice. But what's really important to me is that it's optimized for diving Malpelo, which can be a pretty gnarly place for liveaboards to operate. So the Ferox itself is essentially a mini icebreaker that's been retrofitted for diving with redundant nitrox compressors, a cascade system that can fill the tanks directly on the skiffs. The skiffs themselves are former rescue boats from the North Sea. So overall, it's a very efficient, safe, and seaworthy operation. But what's really a luxury to me is that there's only six divers per dive team, which is huge because when you only have six divers on a dive site, you have far fewer bubbles, more coordination, generally better vibes, and so the animals come closer and you get better interactions. And if you've been on a dive hard trip before, you know that I'm all about this. So I don't know when I'm gonna be back to Malpelo next, but when I do come back, it will be on the Ferox, and I already can't wait. So until next time, dive hard. Oh, yeah.